Okay, so the regenerative blower, sometimes called a channel blower, is a high CFM and higher pressures than, than some of the smaller units out there. The most important things on these to keep them working well is this pressure relief, the gauge, and the filter because they won't take a lot of back pressure. You get too much back pressure on them and you'll burn the windings out. They're susceptible to burn the windings out. You have to have it within the manufacturer specs. It's not a unit you can just throw in and hope it's gonna work because uh, it's gonna come back on you as, as a bad unit. You need to be sure that you check your pressures with a gauge. You can use a, um, put a gauge in line or you can use a portable gauge with a Schrader valve and adjust your pressure relief as you need to. The other thing is if you don't keep this filter clean, it'll get overheated because of the fact that it's, that it's, um, that it's uh, not drawing fresh air, just like on your car. You need to go ahead and wash this thing up good with soap water, let it dry good, put it back together, change this filter as needed, blow it out with air, and then change it as needed. It's a very important part of these systems. Clean the filter. When you start up, check your pressure. Make sure the pressure is the correct pressure for the particular unit you have in. Adjust your pressure relief accordingly. Obviously, you want to be sure that your diffusers aren't clogged and that you, you, that's not producing too much back pressure because you also have to aerate and mix or airlift whatever you're doing with the pump and be sure it's done correctly. These pumps are multi-voltage normally. Single phase, three phase, most of the ones you'll find in the marketplace will be single phase multi-voltage. So we'll show you how to uh, tear one apart and look at a few things. Inside of here there's some uh, foam basically for a muffler, kind of a silencer type thing. Now they can get dirty and if the unit gets loud you'll, uh, you'll want to take them out and clean them. The air is still passed through but it kind of muffles the sound to make it a little quieter. So if you're doing a rebuild you definitely want to go ahead and uh, remove this and clean it real good. You can do that with soap and water, make sure it's good and dry, and then put it back in there. Or you can buy new ones and put them in there either way. But you want to do that just to keep the noise down later. If that thing gets solid or gets full of junk, it won't, it won't muffle any. So it's just that simple. Not much to it. So in the multi-voltage units, it's a matter of changing some wires inside of the junction box. If you don't know anything about electric or you're not an electrician, don't mess with this stuff. I would obviously unplug everything before you get in here. And don't mess with it if you don't know what you're doing. We're going to uh, disassemble this. Now, you've already cut the power, obviously, because you don't want to get shocked. And uh, the only thing you're looking for in here is um, if you got some junk in there or something, it's not allowing it to produce the air like it should. You've checked the motor amps and they're all good. And everything's fine there. You just need to take a look in here and see if there's a bunch of junk that got passed through there as you was running it. Maybe it, it backed up a little bit in there when you was running it. These, these particular models have an additional bearing out front here. So you want to take these three screws loose here. There's little rubber O-rings behind there. You be sure you get them back in there when you're done. Uh, keeps you from losing any air pressure. But it makes for a good solid unit with that bearing out front like that as well as the two motor bearings. You don't want to, you want to just kind of be careful when you're tapping this. You don't want to get in a screwdriver and drive around there too much. When you do, you end up tearing it up. So you just need to Remove it from that bearing a little bit there. Takes a little doing, but okay. Now that we've now that we've removed the cover, we want to look for any scarring or anywhere in back there. This bearing can be replaced in the motor bearings if you need to. But you can see how it works. There's an impeller in here, and you want to be careful because it's really sharp here. It can really tear you up and cut you. But it pulls in the air from the filter end, brings it around, and then pushes it out. It comes through this channel, and then pushes it out. The, the end that heading to your tank. So it intake here, discharge over here, heads out to the tank and aerates or mixes or whatever you're doing 
airlifted. So you'll be sure all this is clean in here because if it's not clean, then obviously you're not going to get the performance you need. So make sure that's good and clean and, uh, and replace the bearing and you'll be in good shape. Now that you got it all reassembled, make sure everything turns good. You check your amperage draw, check the health of the motor and be sure everything's in good shape. As you hear, these start up a lot slower. So that's another reason why it's extremely important that your pressures are right and your pressure reliefs are set correctly. Because if not, if not, you'll burn it up. It'll never get started good. So you want to go ahead and check your amperage draw and be sure you're within motor nameplate. And any of this stuff that you do, do according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Um, it's very important that you stay within the recommendations. Everything looks good there. It's ready to go back in.